This happens many times in which you don't have an ideal case and you place a tooth, it's looking fine, and then everything is distorted and looking horrible. So now we're gonna try to spend some time here to make the anatomy look much better than this. And let's begin. So I like to start right away by getting inter intersections on the occlusal. And because we have too much detail on the occlusal, it makes no sense. So usually I come here and I just smooth everything out just to have the, the rough shape of the occlusal table. Always remember to have the proximal crests at the same at the same level, and also these line angles to be aligned. always start by doing the primary anatomy so the upper first molar always has like a, a rhomboidal shape so it's not square it's like a square a bit distorted and now we're gonna bring the proximal crest a bit inside like this We don't have much space in this case, but we're gonna try our best. I can actually bring the whole tooth a bit lower, so I can sculpt a bit better the occlusal. Now, occlusion-wise, I like to to first define the deepest points in the occlusal anatomy which are these two points and then connect them to the buccal between the buccal cusps then here bring between the palatal cusps and bring to the distal side usually there is a separation there So the occlusal anatomy of the uh, uh, upper uh, first molar is composed by three lobes that comes from here, here and here. You should have, imagine, three lobes connecting in the middle, in which the, con the, the middle point is like the deepest point of the, uh, of the groove. From, from there you build up the body of the cusp. Usually you have some lobes connecting in this area, on the upper molar. 
and I always like to create like it's like an exit for the soap usually it goes like here there there and there I'm gonna adapt again just to see just to get the stronger points and I think it's looking much better than initially it was I'll adjust now just a proximal just to have a, an idea okay I like to use the reach tool to move around the occlusal. You can use it to make the, the grooves sharper, like this. The secondary grooves should never be as deep as the main grooves, otherwise it's going to be too, too fake, it looks horrible. We can do a very subtle, a very subtle carabelli cusp. So make sure that the buccal volume is in line with the adjacents. Always check the buccal corridor to see if anything is too sticking out too much. Probably a bit here. Okay, but we're already on the minimal thickness.
And there you have it, a much better looking molar compared to the one that we had once we, we adapted the library tooth.